Hello and welcome to a short discussion of Chapter 15 of Crow Country by Kate Constable. This chapter is quite a simple one really. It's It does move between a couple of different settings, but the the pace moves fairly quickly through this, so it does jump from one to the other without getting bogged down too much, really. We start here in uh, the, the house of Sadie and Ellie, where Sadie essentially reveals she's not feeling quite herself, and we can see that in this first quotation that I've highlighted. She feels as if she were floating through a dream, watching herself from a distance. So she's finding it difficult, I suppose, to know the difference between the real world and the world of her dreams that she's finding herself in because of the influence of the the spirit wa and if we continue through we can see that she's actually having nightmares and it's causing her a fair amount of discomfort and it's causing her problems in her daily life so the the conflict is impacting her normal life quite significantly Anyway, the story continues, and after she spends a day at school, the um, the family. So we're talking now about um, Ellie and Sadie meet up with David and Walter at the art artworks, the art exhibition that's on, where Walter has a piece hanging. And we get one of these interesting descriptions again. Parents and students eddied slowly, a hum of conversation rising to the cavernous space. It's another good example of the, uh, the way that Constable uses these really clear descriptive passages to signal that we've changed into a different setting. It happens quite frequently throughout the text. But I like this quote here where it says, Sadie gazed at the portrait of the old Aboriginal woman. She had a deeply wrinkled face and wispy white hair, but her eyes were deep and dark, unfathomable. It's almost as if she's, her eyes are being described as those of the crow, like there's some connection there. And it's a form of foreshadowing that's going on here because Sadie will meet uh, the woman that's in this painting. Um, and it's through that meeting with Auntie Lily that um, she's able to work out, I suppose, how to finally solve the mystery, to find out what it is that she needs to do for Crow. And then we move to a different setting. We move to uh, a dinner setting here at David's place, where the four of them are sitting down eating a meal of reheated Chinese food. And they come back to an idea that was mentioned earlier about these um, uh, totems that will be discussed in a little while. But this quote here between Ellie and David highlights some of the tension that's still going on in this relationship. And that that's important to understand that there is still a significant amount of tension there. And this is where Ellie reveals, I want us to fit in as a couple. I want us to be part of the community. And David responds with, well, I'm not sure if I do. So there's a, a very clear distinction. Um, both of these characters have starkly different views of what they expect from each other and what they expect from their relationship. And this quote here from David's also quite interesting. Walter needs to know about his culture. Yeah, said David, but there's no point in knowing about your culture if you can't get a job. Now, this is the sort of attitude you would expect from someone who was of a European background, someone who wasn't, didn't have traditional ties um, to the Aboriginal culture. And it's, I guess it shows how much David has been indoctrinated into the white way of thinking. Um, he, he feels that he needs to meet the expectations that are established, that are set up by the white community, which of course is a horrible shame. And we continue. And throughout this passage here, 
as Walter is describing the importance and significance of the totems and the history of the land and um, what he understands of Wa, the, um, the, the crow spirit and um, the connection he has and the importance he has with the land, we can see how fascinated but also um, concerned Sadie becomes at this point as she just sits and listens staringly in the distance, staring into the distance, trying to take in all that Walter's got to share. And Walter picks up on this, but no one else seems to. Um, and so the, that relationship between Walter and Sadie is strengthened in this part of the text as well. And we get some interesting facts woven in through this part here too. I like this quote. No other culture in history of the world lasted that long. The Egyptians, the Greeks, the Romans, they all destroyed themselves, not us. Because we knew how to live with the land, not fight it. So we survived. And that is a, a, a very interesting point. Um, and that's something that we are still struggling with. We try and manipulate and change the land to suit our purposes when really that's probably the completely opposite thing to what we should be doing. And it was the complete opposite thing to what the traditional Aboriginals um, and, and, and how they use the land. So there you go. That's a short explanation of that chapter. This has been an ETV production brought to you by Prenderville Catholic College.